Hello, how's it going everyone? This is Etho and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play series. So, to begin with here guys, I thought I'd show you an idea. This is a failed idea. One of those things I just haven't been able to get working. Um, maybe you guys have an idea how to, how to make this work. But basically, you remember, some of you probably seen my first season of Terra Firma Craft. You remember that one episode where I dropped the gobblestone on the cow? crushed it, and then the meat went flying everywhere. <laughs> Ever since then, in the back of my mind, I've wanted to make a, a cow farm in vanilla Minecraft where we drop an anvil on, on the cows and then the meat starts flying everywhere. I thought that would be a cool thing. But I haven't been able to automate it. Like I haven't been able to find a way to like reuse the anvils. They always break. There's an issue with them. Because as you know, if you drop an anvil, it takes damage and eventually it's gonna break right so there is a way around that if you drop it on a fence post like it is right now it stays in its falling sand uh, entity mode so you check this out you can actually launch it and if it lands on the fence post again it doesn't break right it doesn't take any damage and if you stand underneath here like if you're a cow <laughs> you'll get whacked it'll actually do do damage so that's good the problem is which you'll see very soon here there we go <laughs> after a certain amount of falling falling sand entities or falling anvils eventually do just break they turn into their item form which kind of sucks um, this started off as a as a slightly damaged anvil now it's a very damaged anvil as well even though it never landed on it anything it took damage so it's kind of an interesting thing here. Like a, an anvil will lose durability doing this, but it won't ever totally break. Like this very damaged anvil won't disappear on us. It'll turn to its item form once it's a falling sand entity for a long time. Like this has been sitting here. So as soon as we try to, to bounce it up, it's going to break again. Right? So it turns it back to its item form. It doesn't destroy the anvil. But there's no way to automatically place it back in the world at the end. So that's why I haven't been able to automate uh, the, this sort of killing device. <laughs> Maybe you guys have an idea of how to? I have no clue, though. I haven't been able to figure it out. Now, if you catch the anvil gently, like let's say we, we stop it at the very top of the arc there, and we put a block underneath it to turn it back to its block form, that's no no bueno. That doesn't work either. That will destroy the anvil because it seems to calculate how long it's been falling for and then it applies all that damage even if it's not moving very fast when it hits hits the ground. And uh, here's how it works in case you're curious. It's a simple thing. Sticky piston, sticky piston. Uh, the anvil sits on top of this fence post, right? And then it moves it to the right and then up. So the slime block goes underneath the anvil. And then it moves it upwards as the anvil is falling down. And that's what balances it. Okay, guys. So let's take a look here at our big book of never finishing projects. Uh, we are getting a few of these done. But number 17 on the list, we have the Simon game. That's what we're going to work on here today. We're going to do some redstone stuff. Uh, try to get that done if we can. Um, every project we get done on there is a new one I can start and not finish and not feel guilty. <laughs> so we want to get as many of those done as we can. Uh, but yeah, last episode we checked out that new memory system and a lot of you were excited about it. I just showed it off. I didn't actually do anything with it. Today we're going to actually do something with it. Uh, we're going to use it to try to uh, finish this game and make it better. So let's, uh, let's start with a demonstration. I think it still works. Maybe. Blue. Let's just try random pressure plates here. I think it's waiting for input right now. Okay, it was green. Next one is blue. I don't know why it's telling us the answer. <laughs> okay, then there's a pause. And now is it going to run through the sequence? Yeah, okay, here we go. Yellow. Green. Notice how slow this is, guys. The, the timing between these is very long. Uh, after we redo the memory here today, this should be like pew, 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 hopefully. But that was what, like one of the big reasons why this game was kind of terrible and I didn't really want to finish it the way it was. 
Um, the other thing... Oof, man. <laughs> this gives me nightmares coming back here again. Uh, the other thing is, this was the old memory system over here. You see these hoppers and the droppers? Um, the way this was working, each one of these held an entry. So we got blue over there, yellow, green. We could only have like one every every hopper dropper combo here. So if we wanted to store like 40 answers, we would need 40 droppers and hoppers paired together here. So this was not even close to complete. This was gonna get a lot bigger <laughs> and a lot slower. Um, so the good news is we are done with all this stuff. We're gonna switch over to a binary system using that hard drive sort of thing we figured out. Um, before we were using item filters, you see how it was detecting the clay blocks, the four different colors. After it would detect those, it would save save the answer to memory over here. The redstone block would move over and then that would connect up to the display or else it would check if it matched our input, depending on if it was showing us the sequence or if it was waiting for our input. Um, so yeah, anyways, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Guess what we get to do here? Rip it all out. Oh, yes. Start fresh. Make it better. Let's clean this baby up. I think we rip out everything pretty much uh, from like here to the left can go. Everything up here is for the display. That can all stay. Everything to the right here is for the inputs. We can leave that. But most of this needs to be redone over here. And a lot of this was just like timings to control the, the memory device here, which we're redoing. So, yeah. Let's tear it out. Whew, all right. Well, look at that. We have a lot of free space here now. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of work to do to get this uh, working again. Uh, but I left it off over here. This is where we're going to start. Uh, this connects directly to the display stuff up there. So if we press the red one, you can see the red clay blocks pop out of the screen. We're on the back side, of course, so it doesn't look right. But <laughs> yeah, green blocks up there. So now uh, we want to connect our display to our memory uh, device. But before we do that, we probably want to add some way of controlling it. Because when we're putting the input into the game, when we're giving our answers to copy the sequence, we don't want the display showing what the memory says. There's like two game modes to, to this game. It, first it shows us the answers, and then it waits for us to, to input the ans answers, right? So we want to shut the display off during the input. So to do that, we're just going to have some sticky pistons uh, running along here. When the clay block is down, the display will be active. When it's up, it'll be off. Okay, so we're already off to a bad start here. I think this is a redstone bug. For some reason, the red one is staying down. No idea why. It's not being powered right now, right? But when you update it... Yeah, something really wonky is going on. <laughs> why did this have to happen to me? Uh, I guess we'll have to do it like this. I got a wavy line going over top. I, I don't like that. It takes up more space, but uh, at least it works, right? I think what was happening, for some reason, this block was unpowering first, right? And then this one was still powered, so it was diagonally powering the piston, causing it to bud, even though the redstone wire was all supposed to unpower at the same time. Don't ever recall that being an issue in Minecraft, but it is now, apparently. All right, so let's say, for example, in memory, it's showing the, it should be red, right, on the display. Then if we want to display that, press a button. We can control how long it shows up on the, on the screen by how long this is powered. Or if uh, it's, this is during the input sequence, we don't have to display it on the screen. We have the option. So that's cool. Uh, next thing we got to do here is, uh, again, connect this to the memory. So we're using a binary system, you know, zeros and ones. Problem is zero and one, that's only two possibilities, two outcomes. We need four in total here, red, blue, yellow, green. So we're going to have to combine two bits together to create four outcomes. Okay. 
Now to do that isn't so simple because we need to build a, a binary decoder, <laughs> um, which I've made in creative already. So I'm just going to build it here and uh, show it to you how it works. And here it is, guys. So check it out. This is my two bit decoder. Uh, pay attention. We have four redstone torches down there and we have two wires up here. So this uh, device takes the information from these two wires, the on off information and converts it to four unique outputs. OK, so right now it's off off and that the green one's on right now. If we do this off on, we have the yellow one on. If we do on off, we have the blue one and on on is the red one. So that's that's the key. It, it splits it into four outputs we can use very easily with our display. Hmm. All right. A little bit later here, guys, I've been uh, pulling my hair out, trying to get this thing working. And this is about as fast as I think I can get it to work. Which I would like it a little bit quicker, honestly, but it's not terrible, terrible. It's way better than it was. Let's hop down here. We'll try to speed it up a bit more and just see what happens. All right, so notice uh, notice the lights over there. As soon as they settle, these piston arms go down. Yellow, green. You see how the blue kind of flashed there? But that, that didn't affect it because the, the piston arms weren't down during that flash. So it's only once it settles that it actually sends the information to the display. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and just take one item out of here. <laughs> and it probably broke everything now, right? Uh, let's go look. It it's, doesn't look like it's good, though. All right, so what's the display doing now? It's broken. <laughs> Yep. Some sometimes uh, green and red were activating at the same time there. Yeah, so it's too fast for it. Well, I tell you what, guys, I've kind of had enough of this uh, for today here. Uh, I wanted to try finish it, but I know it's going to take me many more hours. So uh, I think we should uh, call it here on this and move on to something else. I'll just show you what we did uh, so far here, though. We made good progress. We got our two our 2-bit decoder here like like we set up before and now we have the binary readers set up we have two of them we're using a brewing stand method now instead of the water bucket thing I showed originally in the last video uh, this was your guys' suggestion and it works great it's a really good idea um, you also suggested using named items which you could do but uh, this method you don't have to name anything so I like it a lot so if you have a non stackable item like a shovel in here this is a zero in our binary reader and we activate the dropper. Nothing happens. It stays in the dropper. But if it's a water bottle or some other uh, brewing item, it goes into the brewing stand. So that's that's our one. And you can see here, I fall down. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, seriously? Come on. I'm like sliding off that block. You see that? I'm hitting the block and then I'm like sliding off of it somehow. There we go. <laughs> oh man, one ender pearl left. Got to re restock here. So yeah, we have a zero and one in our reader right now. Uh, this is our data stream in this chest. And as it goes through, we kind of have to prevent it from re-entering here. So I'm storing them up here uh, until this chest empties. So if we press this, It'll advance it forward by one, and we have a one one, and this connects directly to our two bit decoder. So it's actually outputting a, a signal here. So it's on the red right now. Um, we got one item left here. Activate it again, and we have a zero zero this time. So that is the green, and it, yeah, it works pretty good. Um, you can see the items are still in in the dropper or in the brewing stand here, though. Right, and I have a comparator signal here for both of them, which we merge together, and that goes up to this hopper here, which is locked until this uh, 
the dropper and the broom stand are both empty and we're at the end of the cycle. So next time we press this, these items should start flowing back into here and preserve the order. Or is it one more? Oh, we had one more item in there. I forgot. <laughs> okay, so this time we have a 1-1, one, one, red again. Okay, a activate it one more time. And you can see they start flowing in. So, uh, I kind of want to do a little bit more building here today. Uh, last episode, we worked on the pyramid here, came up with a design for it, and uh, the word is in. Nobody likes it. <laughs> A lot of you said it was the worst thing I've ever built. It's okay, I can take it. I can take it, guys. Uh, yeah, it does have its flaws, for sure. Got some good critique on it. Uh, too many holes. Kind of expected that. Um, too much too much detail for... Like, as you get farther away from a build, you, you need less detail, right? And this is like, like a close-up build. And like from this distance, sure, it looks good. The way it is. But uh, from this distance, no, no, no. <laughs> so we'll try to remove some of the detail. There's also nothing for the eye to focus on, which is another issue. Um, a lot of you said we should add a golden beacon at the top. I like that idea. We'll do that. And yeah, uh, we'll get to it in just a second here. I want to show you this, though. I put some trodden dirt under, or, or path blocks, they're called, <laughs> under the cactus here. I think that's a cool thing, right? And then I tried putting it against the wall here. This might be a good thing for us to include in the Sandy City. Wanted to uh, mess with that a little bit. My big issue with like sand builds like this is uh, it's hard to mix in other types of blocks and it's all, all yellow, you know. There's not enough uh, variation to it. Um, a lot of people will mix in blue and oranges. I don't like that very much though, to be honest, personally. But I kind of like this. It's it's a brown block, so maybe in places we'll we'll try it out here. So I'm gonna put some down, maybe over here, and see what that's like. Just mix it in along the wall and stuff too, probably. That needs to be changed. How's that? Yeah, just doing little things like that in, in places I think will help uh, this place look a lot better. Uh, okay, very cool, very cool. Let's take a little walk around here. So I added in some patches of this path block around Sandy City here, just in places, not too much, uh, just to get a feel for it, see what you guys have to say about it. I like it in the sense that it uh, breaks up the ground, it adds another color to it, so it's not all one big glob of the same thing. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if this is really the, really the way to do it, the patches. I also tried another thing here where I just like put it all along the wall. Because one problem is our wall color is the same as the ground color, right? So there's no real uh, separation. Like when you look over over there, for example, the ground and the wall, it's almost hard to tell the difference. Uh, but if you have a separation material like this, it might uh, be a good idea. See what you guys have to say about that anyways. Uh, another thing, we did the sombrero cactus last time. You guys liked it. <laughs> Uh, one idea was, though, to change the birch wood to a spruce wood, so we'll do that as well. Just so that we, we're not using all this yellow color, you know. The more we can change up the colors around here, the better, because it's all pretty pretty similar. Yeah, I like that more, for sure. Anyways, uh, onto the pyramid here. So it would be great if we could mix in another type of block, but I really have trouble <laughs> finding one I like. I know everyone says water and lapis and orange sand and all that, they just stand out so much. If that was an aqua blue, it would look great. But it's a deep blue. And that's like a really bright orange. If it was more of a, a brownish orange, it would look great. But it's not. How about... Uh, let's try to get rid of some of these holes just to begin with here. Uh, I'm thinking we do something like this. We bring it out... Or bring it forward one block. And then we alternate... Uh, stairs and blocks maybe would look good. We'll try it. We'll try it. And then we'll bring also the spiky part of the wall forward a block. Oh, we did that one already. Okay, let's hop down, check it out. Okay. I think it's better, right? It's better? It needs more variation, though. It's just like a straight line. Uh, maybe at this midpoint, we change it up a little bit more. 
Do it like that. Okay, now let's hop down. It's gonna have to make little adjustments. Yeah, that's better. Okay, we're making more improvements. Do we even need that many notches? Maybe we don't. Because I'm worried it's gonna create that hole effect again. <laughs> if we have too many of those. If we uh if we do more of an arch instead, like if that's a stair. And uh, this is a stair. It'll be a little bit smoother that way. Okay. A little bit weird because we have that arch there. And it looks like it's offset now, right? So I redid the second layer there now, and I think it looks a lot better, right? Still might need a few more adjustments, but uh, it's an improvement, I think. I'm going to try to uh, widen those arches, that in inside one there, to match more of the outside shape. Uh, I centered them, which helps a lot, but I think if we made it wider, it might look cool too. You know what? We have a little bit of a hard call here now, because I did that, and I think it looks worse. Maybe because we only did the two, and it'll look better once we change more of the pyramid, but I think I'm just going to go back to, to the, the thinner ones, right? Alright, so we went back to the thinner arches again. Uh, I've kind of gone through the whole pyramid now with, with some of these changes. I've also added birch leaves at every layer, which helped to add to the separation between the layers, I think. Um, still a lot of holes. Is it too many still? <laughs> I'm not sure. I kind of liked having the bottom with all the holes. And then the other layers, they're broken up quite a bit more. And you can see there's a bit of a pattern to it, how it does a triangle. And then we have that tower there in the middle. And over there, I think we should get rid of that and maybe put in an entrance, like an arch, archway entrance would look cool. Yeah, okay. If we make an entrance to the pyramid over here, there is actually a little bit of space here we could build inside. So that's good. I think what I'm going to try to do is build it out of dark oak. Like so. We'll take up the space of the, the tower we ripped out. Put another one over here. And then we'll start arching this uh, together and just see what that looks like. Uh, we might need to... Oh, actually, that's, that's getting pretty tall. <laughs> These layers are pretty cramped together. Not the best design. Um, I don't know about this. Well, we'll try it out. We'll try it out. Okay. And then I guess... Let's just do this right now just to see what that would look like from the ground. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's just try this for right now. This will be opened up. It's going to look really funny. <laughs> I know it already. Yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, I think it's going to look better here if we put sandstone in front of the, the wood here. So we'll try that out. I'm going to replace this dark oak with spruce, though. That way it's a little bit more of a continuation. And uh, in front of this, we should probably put some sandstone. Okay, and I lowered it by one as well, which I think is important because it was it was too tall otherwise. This, is a, this isn't necessarily like an entrance into the building. It might just be like somewhere you come out of the building to look down on, on the peoples. <laughs> uh, but we may eventually put a, a staircase to go down. I don't really want to though because we got the wall down there and we also have the reed field there which I would like to keep. Oh, that's the floor from the next level. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's look now again. A lot of, like, jumping down and checking it out. I don't know about that. Should we keep the wood showing? It does highlight it, right? Another thing to keep in mind about this pyramid, by the way, it looks not so great from the angle we've been viewing it from. <laughs> if we're flying, let's see if we can take off here. Actually, I'll just I'll just enter pearl up. It's easier. Yeah, if we're flying, this pyramid's going to look a lot better. If we're up from some higher ground, because the layers separate a lot better. Like if you look down from this angle, I think it looks a lot lot better. Or if you fly by like that, then if we're looking straight on it at it from here. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up the episode here for today. Here is the comment I picked out, which is very suiting. It says, if you hate desert themes, 
why did you choose to build there in modded that's that's what i knew for sure <laughs> i thought with all the new block types maybe i i could pull it off in modded but uh i don't know i struggle with it here's my thing like sometimes you build and it just looks good right i love it when that happens but sometimes you have to try like 5, 10, 20 different things. I think I've redone this pyramid at least 10 times now, guys. If you, Like some of them I did off camera even. Um, this is time number 10. You'll have to let me know. <laughs> I would just, I would be happy with it just being acceptable, you know, at this point. I'm not even looking for good. I'm just looking for acceptable. But if people are telling me it's the worst thing I've ever built, I have to keep trying. So we'll see after today's episode if I can... If, if I can pass on it now. <laughs> well, I tried again anyways. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any ideas, feel free to leave them. And I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.